DevOps is a term was first coined in 2009 by Patrick DeBose, who became one of its chief proponents. Simply put, DevOps is a combination of software development and operations. DevOps is a software engineering culture and practice that aims at unifying software development, dev, and software operation, ops. The main characteristic of the DevOps movement is to strongly advocate automation and monitoring at all steps of software construction, from integration, testing, releasing to deployment and infrastructure management. DevOps aims at shorter development cycles, increased deployment frequency, more dependable releases, and close alignment with business objectives. In recent years, more tangential DevOps initiatives have also evolved, such as OpsDev. WinOps, and BizDevOps. List the essential DevOps tools. Git. Git. GitHub. Jenkins. Selenium. Puppet. Kubernetes. Bamboo. Chef. Ansible. Nagios. Docker. Monit. ELK Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana. Collect, Collect. SolveStack and more. What is DevOps? DevOps is a set of practices that automates the processes between software development and IT teams, in order that they can build, test, and release software faster and more reliably. The concept of DevOps is founded on building a culture of collaboration between teams that historically functioned in relative silos. The promised benefits include increased trust, faster software releases, and ability to solve critical issues quickly, and better manage unplanned work. Or, DevOps is the practice of operations and development engineers participating together in the entire service lifecycle, from design through the development process to production support. How do you take DevOps approach with Amazon Web Services? Amazon Web Services, AWS provide many tools and features to deploy and manage applications in AWS. As per DevOps, we treat infrastructure as code. We mainly use following two services from AWS for DevOps. CloudFormation, we use AWS CloudFormation to create and deploy AWS resources by using templates. We can describe our dependencies and pass special parameters in these templates. CloudFormation can read these templates and deploy the application and resources in AWS Cloud. OpsWorks, AWS provides another service called OpsWorks that is used for configuration management by utilizing Chef Framework. We can automate server configuration, deployment and management by using OpsWorks. It helps in managing EC2 instances in AWS as well as any on-premises servers. What is the typical DevOps workflow you use in your organization? The typical DevOps workflow in our organization is as follows. We use Atlas and Jira for writing requirements and tracking tasks. Based on the Jira tasks, developers check in code into Git version control system. The code checked into Git is built by using Apache Maven. The build process is automated with Jenkins. During the build process, Automated tests run to validate the code checked in by developer. Code built on Jenkins is sent to organization's Artifactory. Jenkins automatically picks the libraries from Artifactory and deploys it to production. During production deployment Docker images are used to deploy same code on multiple hosts. Once code is deployed to production, we use Nagios to monitor the health of production servers. Splunk-based alerts inform us of any issues or exceptions in production. What are the main benefits of DevOps? DevOps is a very popular trend in software development. Some of the main benefits of DevOps are as follows. Release velocity, DevOps practices help in increasing the release velocity. We can release code to production more often and with more confidence. Development cycle, with DevOps. The complete development cycle from initial design to production deployment becomes shorter. Deployment rollback In DevOps, we plan for any failure in deployment rollback due to a bug in code or issue in production. This gives confidence in releasing feature without worrying about downtime for rollback. Defect detection With DevOps approach, 
we can catch defects much earlier than releasing to production. It improves the quality of the software. Recovery from failure In case of a failure, we can recover very fast with DevOps process. Collaboration With DevOps, collaboration between development and operations professionals increases. Performance-oriented With DevOps, organization follows performance-oriented culture in which teams become more productive and more innovative. What are the popular DevOps tools that you use? We use following tools for work in DevOps. Jenkins, this is an open source automation server used as a continuous integration tool. We can build, deploy and run automated tests with Jenkins. Git, it is a version control tool used for tracking changes in files and software. Docker, this is a popular tool for containerization of services. It is very useful in cloud-based deployments. Nagios, we use Nagios for monitoring of IT infrastructure. Splunk, this is a powerful tool for log search as well as monitoring production systems. Puppet, we use Puppet to automate our DevOps work so that it is reusable. What is continuous integration? Continuous integration is the process of automating the build and testing of code every time a team member commits changes to version control. S encourages developers to share their code and unit tests by merging their changes into a shared version control repository after every small task completion. Committing code triggers an automated build system to grab the latest code from the shared repository and to build, test, and validate the full master branch, also known as the trunk or main. What is continuous delivery? Continuous delivery, CD, is the process to build, test, configure and deploy from a build to a production environment. Multiple testing or staging environments create a release pipeline to automate the creation of infrastructure and deployment of a new. Successive environments support progressively longer running activities of integration, load, and user acceptance testing. Continuous integration starts the CD process and the pipeline stages each successive environment the next upon successful completion of tests. What are the benefits of continuous integration? SIP. The benefits of continuous integration SIP, are as follows. SIR makes the current build constantly available for testing, demo and release purpose. With SIP, developers write modular code that works well with frequent code check-ins. In case of a unit test failure or bug, developer can easily revert back to the bug-free state of the code. There is drastic reduction in chaos on release day with SIP practices. With SIP, we can detect integration issues much earlier in the process. Automated testing is one very useful side effect of implementing SIP. All the stakeholders including business partners can see the small changes deployed into pre-production environment. This provides early feedback on the changes to software. Automated SIN testing generates metrics like code coverage code complexity that help in improving the development process. What are the best practices of continuous integration? SIP. Build automation. In SIP, we create such a build environment that even with one command build can be triggered. This automation is done all the way up to deployment to production environment. Main code repository. In SIP, we maintain a main branch in code repository that stores all the production ready code. This is the branch that we can deploy to production anytime. Self-testing build. Every build in SIS should be self-tested. It means with every build there is a set of tests that runs to ensure that changes are of high quality. Every day commits to baseline. Developers will commit all of their changes to baseline every day. This ensures that there is no big pileup of code waiting for integration with the main repository for a long time. Build every commit to baseline, with automated continuous integration, every time a commit is made into baseline, a build is triggered. This helps in confirming that every change integrates correctly. Fast build process, one of the requirements of SIS to keep the build process fast so that we can quickly identify any problem. Production-like environment testing, in SIS, we maintain a production-like environment also known as pre-production or staging environment which is very close to production environment. We perform testing in this environment to check for any integration issues. 
publish build results. We publish build results on a common site so that everyone can see these and take corrective actions. Deployment automation. The deployment process is automated to the extent that in a build process we can add the step of deploying the code to a test environment. On this test environment, all the stakeholders can access and test the latest delivery. What is SICT in DevOps? SICT stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Delivery. These are two different concepts that are complementary to each other. Continuous Integration SICT in solid developer work is merged to main branch several times a day. This helps in reducing integration problems. And so we try to minimize the duration for which a branch remains checked out. A developer gets early feedback on the new code added to main repository by using SIT. Continuous Delivery CD. In CD, a software team plans to deliver software in short cycles. They perform development, testing and release in such a short time that incremental changes can be easily delivered to production. In CD, as a DevOps we create a repeatable deployment process that can help achieve the objective of continuous delivery. What are microservices in DevOps? Microservices describes the architectural pattern of composing a distributed application from separately deployable services that perform specific business functions and communicate over web interfaces. DevOps teams encapsulate individual pieces of functionality in microservices and build larger systems by composing the microservices like building blocks. Microservices apply an example of the open, closed principle, they are open for extension, using the interfaces they expose, and closed for modification, in that each is implemented and versioned independently. Microservices provide many benefits over monolithic architectures. They can remove single points of failure, SPOFs, by ensuring issues in one service do not crash or impact other parts of an application. Individual microservices can be scaled out independently to provide additional availability and capacity. DevOps teams can extend functionality by adding new microservices without unnecessarily affecting other parts of the application. Using microservices can increase team velocity. DevOps practices such as continuous integration and continuous delivery, are used to drive microservice deployments. How does cloud formation work in AWS? AWS cloud formation is used for deploying AWS resources. In cloud formation, we have to first create a template for a resource. A template is a simple text file that contains information about a stack on AWS. A stack is a collection of AWS resources that we want to deploy together in an AWS as a group. Once the template is ready and submitted to AWS, CloudFormation will create all the resources in the template. This helps in automation of building new environments in AWS. What are the main features of AWS OpsWorks stacks? Some of the main features of AWS OpsWorks stacks are as follows. Server support. AWS OpsWorks stacks We can automate operational tasks on any server in AWS as well as our own data center. Scalable automation We get automated scaling support with AWS OpsWorks stacks. Each new instance in AWS can read configuration from OpsWorks. It can even respond to system events in same way as other instances do. Dashboard we can create dashboards in OpsWorks to display the status of all the stacks in AWS. Configuration as code AWS OpsWorks stacks are built on the principle of configuration as code. We can define and maintain configurations like application source code. Same configuration can be replicated on multiple servers and environments. Application support OpsWorks supports almost all kinds of applications. So it is universal in nature. How will you run a script automatically when a developer commits a change into Git? Git provides the feature to execute custom scripts when certain event occurs in Git. This feature is called hooks. We can write two types of hooks. Client-side hooks. Server-side hooks. For this case, we can write a client-side post commit hook. This hook will execute a custom script in which we can add the message and code that we want to run automatically with each commit. What are the main use cases of Ansible? 
Some of the popular use cases of Ansible are as follows. App deployment. With Ansible, we can deploy apps in a reliable and repeatable way. Configuration management. Ansible supports the automation of configuration management across multiple environments. Continuous delivery. We can release updates with zero downtime with Ansible. Security. We can implement complex security policies with Ansible. Compliance. Ansible helps in verifying an organization's systems in comparison with the rules and regulations. Provisioning. We can provide new systems and resources to other users with Ansible. Orchestration. Ansible can be used in orchestration of complex deployment in a simple way. What is Docker Hub? Docker Hub is a cloud-based registry. We can use Docker Hub to link code repositories. We can even build images and store them in Docker Hub. It also provides links to Docker Cloud to deploy the images to our hosts. Docker Hub is a central repository for container image discovery, distribution, change management, workflow automation and team collaboration. What is multi-factor authentication? In security implementation, we use multi-factor authentication, MFA. In MFA, a user is authenticated by multiple means before giving access to a resource or service. It is different from simple user, password-based authentication. The most popular implementation of MFA is two-factor authentication. In most of the organizations, we use username, password and an RSA token as two factors for authentication. With MFA, the system becomes more secure and it cannot be easily hacked. What are the main benefits of Nagios? Nagios is open source software to monitor systems, networks and infrastructure. The main benefits of Nagios are as follows. Monitor, DevOps can configure Nagios to monitor IT infrastructure components, system metrics and network protocols. Alert, Nagios will send alerts when a critical component in infrastructure fails. Response, DevOps acknowledges alerts and takes corrective actions. Report, periodically Nagios can publish, send reports on outages, events and SLAs etc. Maintenance, during maintenance windows, we can also disable alerts. Planning, based on past data, Nagios helps in infrastructure planning and upgrades. What are the options for security in Jenkins? In Jenkins, it is very important to make the system secure by setting user authentication and authorization. To do this we have to do following. First we have to set up the security realm. We can integrate Jenkins with LDAP server to create user authentication. Second part is to set the authorization for users. This determines which user has access to what resources. In Jenkins, some of the options to set up security are as follows. We can use Jenkins' own user database. We can use the DAP plugin to integrate Jenkins with LDAP server. We can also set up matrix-based security on Jenkins. Subscribe to our channel, Interview Gig. Visit our website for more articles and interview questions and answers. www.interviewgig.com Like, share and comment. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. Click the bell button for latest updates.